This is what the CAB investigators decided happened. Uh, the left wing of the United Aircraft actually cut, skipped over the top of that distinctive triple tail on the TWA Super Constellation and then instance afterwards uh, cut through the rear just in front of the tail section, uh, severing the entire tail section off of the TWA airliner. Most of the wing outboard from the engines uh, on the United uh, was gone at that point and the, wing, the engines themselves would have, would have suffered some damage. Uh, there was also pieces of flying wreckage that flew back and probably damaged the tail of the United aircraft. Without a tail, the TWA aircraft basically went straight down. In fact, it, it ended up crashing inverted. It was slightly upside down. They had, uh, the United plane had some controllability, but not a whole lot. With the, that much of its wing missing and probably those engines damaged as well, it would have lost a lot of lift and uh, thrust off of that wing, so that wing would have gone down. It basically would have gone into a, a violent bank, possibly even a roll to the left, and a steep descent. It was, however, still at least marginally flyable, and um, what was discovered, that garbled radio transmission I mentioned earlier, they were able to go back and play that and analyze it, and the same team of experts that later worked on the cockpit recordings from the Apollo 1 fire were able to determine that there were two voices uh, on that recording, and one of them was uh, the uh, co-pilot, and uh, one of them was uh, probably the captain board that aircraft, and uh, the, the main voice was able to say, uh, Salt Lake United 718, uh, we're going in or we're going down, and in the background you could hear uh, the other person yelling some, something that was probably pull up, pull up, so they were still trying to fly that aircraft right up to the last second. Uh, that's just about the end of uh, my segment here. I just wanted to thank a few of the folks that uh, had contributed some of the pictures. And uh, these are also some pictures uh, in these uh, photo credits uh, from the trip that I took out in April. This is one of the United uh, DC-7's tires that had washed almost down to the Colorado River over the last 50 years from the United Rex site. These are the nice folks, Hazel Clark and Tom Martin, who took me down. It's a, truly a grueling trip. Uh, it's been described as taking your life into your own hands to get to the crash site. That's not too far from the case. Um, but these folks uh, made it <laughs> probably possible and certainly a whole lot easier than it would have been without. And this is uh, looking up slope uh, at the base of the, actually looking over towards the TWA impact site, which is over this area. This is one of the uh, tray tables from the United Flight 718 uh, that uh, was up at the base of the cliff. This is uh, looking uh, down the Little Colorado River, the confluence is where the Colorado and the Little Colorado River come together. That's where these crashes happen. And this is looking over at uh, Chihuahua Butte from uh, just up the Little Colorado. And this uh, here, this is, uh, this is my Leatherman tool for scale little pocket knife tool. This here is melted aluminum uh, from the TWA impact site. Uh, this aluminum had melted and actually run down in puddles and solidified. And that concludes my portion. And I'm going to turn it back over to Bill for the uh, impact and the legacies of this crash.